Hello, my name is Peter Parfit. Welcome to the New Brit Workshop. I've just about finished my new mitre workstation for my Festal Capex saw. And I think it's now time to share with you uh, some of the work that I've done. Now, my aim is to give you uh, an insight into how I went about this, such that if you had a copy of the plans, uh, you'd be able to make something pretty similar. Now, the key design principle in this is that this Capex workstation is part of my mobile workshop concept. And I'm using on here the same casters from Coldeen that I've used on my uh, mobile workbench, which is just here on my right. And it means that I can move things around the workshop any way that I want, very quickly, to suit the job in hand. Now let's look at the key features of any mitre workstation. First of all, of course, there has to be somewhere to put the mitre saw. And in 99 cases out of 100, your mitre saw should be screwed in place or fixed in some way such that it cannot move. And I've done that with this one. Next, I wanted to have some form of continuation of the surface area of the capex beyond the saw itself. And that's why I've got these shoulders on either side. And those are collinear with uh, the top of the saw. I also wanted to make sure that I had the ability to expand uh, the workstation if needed. Perhaps if I'm doing larger uh, pieces of work and so on. And so on both sides I've got these extension pieces here. And these are the identical uh, design to those that you would have seen on my mobile workbench. Now I'm not going to give you a step-by-step -step, uh, detail of the construction process uh, because almost everything associated with this bench I've done before and shown you in other videos. But first of all, I want to just say a little bit more about the casters. And the key feature of my mobile workshop concept are these casters from Coldeen. And they're from their industrial uh, standard duty range. And they're blue elastic rubber. And uh, this is the 100 millimeter diameter wheel. It's got brakes, a swivel lock and it will take a weight of up to 140 kilos. I'm putting some uh, cross pieces here. Now these cross pieces are important to help uh, hold the um, casters. Now this is the rear of the workstation here and my original plan was to put the two rear casters in such a way that this brake uh, um, feature here could not touch the wall uh, as it's being maneuvered close to a wall. But I've actually changed my mind because I want to bring the center line of the caster back a little. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, a rubber bumper, which I'll mount on the, on the uh, back, uh, which will help to uh, counteract any damage to a wall. And therefore, I'm going to move this uh, back now uh, so it's like this. Now, the main carcass is done using the Festal Domino machine. And I've got two, I've got both the large and the small. But if you've only got the small domino machine, you can make adjustments to suit. Now let me describe some of the key features of the anatomy of the mitre station that I'm building. First of all, there are legs at each corner, and these are 50 millimeters square in section. Uh, the rails that go across at the bottom and here uh, are 30 millimeters by 45. This central uh, support here, uh, this style, is 50 millimetres by 30 millimetres. And it's got a notch cut in it uh, so that it goes behind uh, the rail at the bottom and the rail at the top. And there's a similar one of these at the back. Now I'm going to put drawers in here, and I'm going to put a total of four drawers on each side. And you can see these drawer runners which have been placed in here already. And those are mounted on uh, pieces of wood that run uh, front to back, and these are pieces in the middle of 30 millimeter by 45 millimeter stock. And at either uh, of the sides, on the left and right hand side, uh, the equivalent draw runner pieces are 25 millimeters thick, but still by 45 millimeters high. I'm just going to quickly talk you through the 
domino strategy because we're using three different sizes of domino. I've got some 10 millimeter dominoes which are 80 millimeters long. I've got some 10 millimeter dominoes 50 millimeters long and some 8 millimeter dominoes which are 50 millimeters long. Now I've laid the legs out more or less as they should be although the distances are wrong. These are the two front legs and these are the two rear legs and we will have rails going across here and here, here and here and across there and there, there and there. Now in order to fix the long rails I'm using the 10 by 80 millimeter dominoes and they go into the legs 30 millimeters and into the long rails 50 millimeters. Now for the short rails that go across the top on both sides we're using the 10 millimeter dominoes 50 millimeters long. So those slots are 25 millimeters deep there and there and there and there. At the bottom because these side rails at the bottom are only 25 millimeters thick, the ones at the top are 30 millimeters thick, uh, the 25 millimeter ones will only get an 8 millimeter uh, domino, but it is 50 millimeters long. So at the bottom here and here and the equivalent on the other legs here, uh, we're using 8 by 50 dominoes and each of those slots are 25 millimeters deep. Now the remaining dominoes are used for the uh, draw runners and there are four here which have four sets of draw runners there, four on this side and then we have the ones which go in the middle uh, with these styles which fit in the center of the long horizontal rails and all of these dominoes are 8 by 50 and they all go in 25 millimeters into the uh, main stock and 25 millimeters into the various rails. I really want to show you just how good this INCRA precision rule is. It is brilliant and it's particularly good uh, for doing really accurate and repeatable marks for domino joints. There is a groove running all the way around this section here, that's in the back of the leg here, in the front of the leg there, uh, and the underside and the top side of these rails, which takes this MDF. And this piece of MDF is only a quarter of an inch or six millimeters in thickness. And I have MDF at the back set up in a similar way. And those are two separate pieces of MDF, still quarter inch MDF. So I'm set up to do uh, a cut here and I've got a pair of path dogs uh, and a Veritas uh, bench dog there. And uh, my rail is set up against my pencil mark. And I know that that will produce a square cut. But uh, this uh, path dog is rather close to this uh, rear edge of my wood and so uh, the body of the saw uh, will uh, knock that and it will interfere with the cut. And there's a really simple way around this. My rail is on my wood. It's held there by the uh, rubberiness underneath the guide rail. I just removed the path dog and now I can do my cut. And there we have a perfect cut, absolutely perfectly square. Because I'm using up sort of workshop scraps and I've got a, a pair of pieces here which form the, the field where the capex will sit, uh, I want to disguise this front edge and the capex will actually come out just over this join. So I'm going to put a, an L-shaped uh, piece of mahogany because uh, that will form a nice contrast with the ash. Uh, on this front and I've already cut the, uh, the section here, the rebate there. Right, we're now at a critical design stage. The capex sitting on a flat surface uh, should have a height here of 112 millimeters. Now underneath the capex there are four little rubber feet and it should be sitting on those when it's on a flat surface. But the four feet are designed to fit into the pitch on uh, one of the Festal uh, workbenches like the MFT3 or the equivalent which is used especially for the capex. And when it does that, then that height goes down to 110 millimeters because those little rubber feet are now in the holes on that workbench. 
Now, for some reason, I, I don't know why, mine, when it's sitting on a flat surface, is exactly 110. It may be that my little rubber feet have been squished a bit over time. So that's my assumption. But I say this is a critical uh, stage in the design now because you should check yours and get it exactly right. I've put the straight edge across here, and this now allows me to check the distance from the top of these end pieces, both this side and that side, uh, to the top of the capex. And in my case, they are on both sides 58 millimeters. Now, uh, if you were to have these side wings, these side pieces that we're going to put on uh, too low, then the only way you could uh, sort that out is either by placing something on top of each of those side wings or lowering the capex. If you have them too high, then it's relatively easy uh, to put uh, washers or some form of spacer underneath all the screw fixing places uh, which are underneath the capex. So if you're going to do this, err on the side of caution. And mine is 58 millimeters, so I'm going to stick with my design uh, size of 60 millimeters for the height of these uh, side wings. And that means then I may have to put a little spacer underneath my capex, but that's not that difficult. And with my straight edge still attached, I'm now going to screw uh, this top assembly onto uh, the main body. It's not being glued, it's only screwed. And I've got a screw in each corner which goes into the top of the leg, and a screw in each corner that goes into uh, the rail. Now the drawers are constructed in exactly the same way as the drawers that I made for my mobile workbench. And I've made a video about the construction of the drawers on the mobile workbench, which you should look at to see how these are made. They use the same runners that I've used in many of my other projects. Now one of the things that I had considered doing, and the dimensions are almost perfect for this, was having some of the new Festal uh, draw runner inserts, which they are now uh, selling, which allow you to put your sustainers on a little uh, platform uh, which has got uh, uh, bearing guided uh, runners uh, and that makes quite a neat solution as an extra storage area for these. Uh, but I've not done that because I couldn't get hold of the raw materials in time. And again, uh, these are identical in terms of uh, design to the ones that I've made on my mobile workbench. I've set it up as follows. First of all, running between the uh, extension wing and this piece here, I've got a piece of wood which is 10 millimeters thick and that runs the whole length across here. I've then clamped the extension wing onto the main body using this clamp here. Next, in order to make sure that they're in the same plane across here, uh, I've put a piece of wood at this end, clamped it on, and the same at this end, clamped it on. And that now is holding this extension wing in exactly the right place, ready for me to drill the holes on both sides. And I'm going to use this gadget, which um, I got from Axminster Power Tools quite a long time ago, to help me drill a nice right angle hole. My supports this time uh, are, are made such that they overlap. So you've got to take a little bit more care on how you produce uh, the hinging on the two sides. And that is covered in the uh, drawing that I've made for this. Well, there you have it. That's my new mitre station for the brilliant Capex saw. I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. If you would like to have a copy of the plans, just send me your email address by private message and I'll do my best to respond to you uh, as fast as I can. Thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye-bye.